I'm Dr. Lee Axt, Director of Laryngology at the Johns Hopkins Voice Center. I'm here today to talk about vocal cord leukoplakia. It's a very commonly seen condition, patients with these white lesions on their vocal cords coming into otolaryngology offices or laryngology offices. And there's a clinical dilemma that these patients present to us. And the dilemma is, if that lesion is possibly pre-malignant, if it's a dysplasia diagnosis, we know it's got overall a 15% chance of progressing to malignancy, but it's a superficial lesion. So now we don't want to do too much. We don't want to remove too much of the vocal cord and create lifelong dysphonia for what is not yet cancer. But we also don't want to do too little, leave the lesion behind and allow for progression of disease. And so as a laryngologist, the specialty practice I've developed is in trying to manage these patients where we're not doing too much or doing too little. So that's what I'd like to talk about today. And in that clinical conundrum, what we do is aim to remove the entire lesion operatively, but to remove it in a very shallow, very superficial plane. Get it all out, but don't cause too much scar. In fact, try your best not to cause any scar so that these patients have a good voice outcome. And that way, if there is the need for repeated surgery, one procedure after the next after the next, you're not adding cumulative scar each and every time. So that's the hallmark of operative therapy. In my hands, I use a KTP laser for that. KTP laser does not need to be used for this case. In my hands, it's what works best for me to get that complete excision at the appropriate depth, but people can use CO2 laser, people can use cold instrument microflaps. The point operatively is try not to leave some behind by biopsying only a small portion of the lesion and then allowing for dysplasia to sit there on the vocal cord and possibly progress, but also try not to grab your largest cupped forceps and take out a big chunk of the vocal cord as you're trying to remove the lesion. The goal is to balance the functional outcome and the oncologic outcome. So that's an operative approach to leukoplakia. Beyond that, there's some state-of-the-art care, and that involves taking patients with leukoplakia because the lesions can be recurrent from the operating room into the office. Clearly, office follow-up's always been a part of the care of these patients. You need to be able to surveil them for recurrence, but now what we can do when we have a pathologic diagnosis of pre-cancer, of dysplasia that's not malignant, and a patient's been operated upon and is looking good, and then we see a small white lesion come back, we can treat them in the office so that we don't need to take them back to the operating room in repeated fashion. And so office-based therapy is becoming the hallmark of quaternary care, tertiary care, specialty laryngology care of the dysplasia patient. And it really involves the use of channeled scopes in the, in the office, the ability to topicalize a patient in the office, get a really good view, pass a laser fiber through the scope, and treat the awake patient in the office. And in my hands, having that distal chip channeled scope is an absolutely necessary part of providing high-level care to the dysplasia patient. Even in a diagnostic fashion, you can't treat what you can't see. And even if you're not using office-based lasers, I'd encourage everybody with rigid stroboscopy or with distal chip, flexible endoscopy, get the best look at the patient that you can. Stroboscopy to get an on-edge look at the medial surface of the vocal cords and not just a look from above with a halogen light makes a real big difference to spot medial edge disease and if you can't see it, you can't treat it. So I'd encourage everyone taking care of leukoplakia, get the best look you can, do the most tailored, precise surgery you can, follow them closely, and when necessary, add office-based laser to your armamentarium.